So I wanted to uh, do a video because uh, here recently, uh, me and my wife have been buying a, a bunch of manga um, and we've run out of shelf space once again. And uh, the two of us, we've been collecting manga since around 2003, I want to say. So kind of right at, or, uh, at the start of the uh, golden age of uh, manga. So I kind of got into collecting manga when I was uh, roughly 20, I want to say. So that was about 18 years ago. Um, anyway, while I was researching uh, shelving options, I saw there was a lot of people on YouTube kind of doing uh, kind of like virtual tours of their manga collection. And I want to jump on the bandwagon here. So um, right before recording this video, I actually took an inventory of all the manga that I have. And it came out to about uh, 560 volumes. I mean, it kind of came out to 560 exactly. But there's kind of some asterisks with the counting. And I will kind of go through that as I do the tour here. But I'm starting over here with this shelf. Because this is the shelf that I'm actually looking to replace. This is like an old shitty uh, DVD slash CD um, shelf. Which I find to be great size for the standard uh, Viz slash Tokyo Pop uh, size uh, manga. I know that has a technical Japanese name, but it's escaping me right now. So, you know, there we are. So, uh, I'm actually in front of my game table here. Um, so let me kind of come around. Hopefully I'll have some space here um, to kind of go through here and do a tour. Let me see if I can zoom out. There we go. Maybe a little bit more. And let me see if I can do it further still. I'm actually going to go underneath my game table here. Um, all right, so let's kind of start on the top shelf here. I um, think all of these are more or less my wife's. Um, Nodame uh, Contable. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that one. Uh, my wife got this as a Christmas present from my sister-in-law, who's actually from Tokyo. So uh, that's how she got that. Uh, we were there, the full set. Um, Nisiki, um, or is that Inseki? Anyway, I think it's Inseki. Anyway, uh, we only have the first volume of that. I don't know why. Oko is mine, and then Boruto is kind of both me and my wife's. Uh, let's see here, going down here, I got the full set of Gunsmith Cats. This is my wife's uh, full collection of gals. I see that I actually have nine misplaced. Oh well. Uh, and I haven't read it any of the... Uh, most of the shoujo stuff in the collection, I haven't read. That's more of my wife's. I have read this, The Color of Rage. I know it's kind of cut off from the title there. Um, full set of uh, Battle Royale first printing. Um, this is actually the very first manga I started collecting. These exact ones. So I've had them in my collection forever. And when I first got them, I didn't know how to take care of manga. So um, this might be hard to tell in the light. But I've got some significant... Um, yellowing going on and the cover's a little beat again because I wasn't treating my manga collection quite right uh, and I'll fix that later there's like little nubs that it's catching on um Oron Host Club full set um and Peach Bush I know this isn't a manga so um and I didn't count that and then the Dead Boy Tales is like Almost like an American manga, but I mean, I know it's not truly manga. It didn't originate in Japan. Um, let's see. And sorry if I get the camera out of focus here. We got Hot Gimmick, which might be my wife's favorite shoujo. She really likes Miki Ihara. Um, which is why she has Honey Hunt and uh, Tokyo Boys and Girls. Um, high School Debut, Full Set. Um, the 13th volume is over there. Kare Kano, Kare First Love. Again, full sets. Uh, here we go. Here's like a promo card or something from back when I used to play the Naruto card game for like half a minute. 
I uh, got old boy, full set, full set of Death Note, Ohikoshi, and Emerald by Hiroaki Samura, guy that did Blade of the Immortal. He's fantastic. Uh, Japanese volume of Naruto, uh, Nana, uh, Naruto, a Japanese volume of Nana. And then we actually have um, all of Naruto, including the little one shot, which is over there. Might not be able to tell. All right, so there's my first shelf. And then this is what I like to call my Koike shelf. So this has uh, all of Lone Wolf and Cub, all of Samurai Executioner, and all of um, Path of the Assassin, which is pretty cool because those were kind of low print run and can be hard to find. Um, here's some Blade of the Immortal. Now, what's interesting is Blade of the Immortal originally came out in single issues, like an American-style comic. And uh, my wife actually has a full collection of that. And then uh, starting at volume 20, they switched exclusively to the manga format. Um, so I've been trying to go back and collect all the volumes. And you can tell that these are the original printings because there's no uh, number on the uh, spine which isn't that awful when um, uh, companies switch up how they do the spines that's so annoying um, this is some thing that my sister-in-law got my wife when she went to South America I don't normally keep pervy statues around uh, let's see here get some gaming coasters uh, full uh, collection or full set of Lady Snowblood by Koei K. Uh, new Lone Wolf and Cub. Um, I haven't finished reading this. Uh, I think I've got to volume three or four, but it's a pretty interesting way to continue the uh, series. And uh, unless otherwise noted, um, I've pretty much read all of my quote unquote manga, and my wife's pretty much read all of hers. I'll try to point out when I actually haven't read anything. Now, what's interesting here, let me kind of take a step back, is there's a lot more in my collection besides manga. Like, I've got tons of uh, graphic novels. And then, let me kind of come back here into my basement. Uh, we have tons of actual, you know, comic books back here. So, um, I'm only focusing on the uh, manga portion of my collection. But, um, then there's... So manga down here, but this is mostly the uh, Star Wars uh, manga version there. Not too much to uh, talk about, but uh, I counted those as part of my manga collection. Uh, sorry for getting my hand in front of the camera. So come over here. And again, like... Um, another bookcase i also do a lot of board games as you can tell like here's a bunch of my euro style games here's a bunch of my conflict uh kind of games so uh getting the full geek tour over here so these are a uh, full set of inuyasha and again my wife was getting this like pretty much when it first came out so it's got the original format and then it switches uh to number 13 and uh the standard style again i forget what those are called uh full set of that um all the way to 56 full set of bakuman uh full set of butterflies flowers full set of mermaid um again like i don't know what they were doing with manga but um the trend back in the day like late 90s early 2ks um, they just wouldn't put numbers on the spine for whatever reason. So it was really hard to tell if you had a full set. But the original Mermaid was only three volumes. I think it's four volumes now and more of the uh, Viz uh, size. Uh, okay. These are just random books. Uh, my Japanese books when I was in uh, college and uh, taking that. Uh, no, I don't speak fluent Japanese. I do speak a little bit. And I have a, um, uh, what's that test you can go to do? The uh, Japanese, I can't even, the JLPT. I pass like the most basic level of that. So um, there you go. 
in case anyone was wondering, here's a bunch of my um, gaming books. And then down here, got a mix. So got a full set of Full Metal Panic, one volume of Full Metal Panic Overload. Um, I think this was more like a chibi series. Uh, Love is a Foreign Language, that's not technically a manga. It was from Oni Press. Full set of Maison Ikoku. Again, it's annoying because there's no um, number volumes down there, or volume numbers down there. Uh, just a bunch of regular kind of stuff. A lot of stuff from Oni Press. I think the only real manga over here is 12 Days and uh, Socrates in Love. And again, this death right here is Jill Thompson. It's a continuation of the Sandman. And I got some cobwebs on there. Uh, let's see here. Last shelf of manga. And again, I got a ton of graphic novels up here. Um, that I'm not counting, obviously. And then here's kind of where I get to the asterisks with my uh, counting. Um, so I'm counting Akira, all of these as one. And I do have Domu, so eat your heart out. I know this is a hard one to find. Uh, my wife got that for me for Christmas one year, right when it first came out. But I'm surprised they've never reprinted this. With as prolific as Otomo is, you would think it would be... Oh, uh, all of his work would be more widely available but it's not so what are you going to do uh let's see here um i was counting these as three because these are supposed to be three and ones so i counted all of this as um what 28 volumes because each one of these is a three and one and the last one is uh four uh Rurouni kenshin might be one of my favorite shonen stories I think I'm always going to have a soft spot in my heart for Dragon Ball because it's what got me into manga, but love Kenshin a lot. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, with the light, full set of that. Again, it's mostly my wife's stuff. Generally speaking, if something here is shoujo, it's my wife's. And if it's more shonen style, it's mine. Um, let's see here. I've got The Two Faces of Tomorrow and Planet Tess. I have a soft spot in my heart for these like weird um, science fiction manga, so I try to pick them up whenever I can. I know I need to get the second volume of Planetes, but uh, you know, one step at a time here. I got the uh, Hagakure manga. Um, the Hagakure, uh, again, another thing that got me into Japanese uh, language and culture. Um, I've started to collect Kake Gurui. Um, I read the first one and I didn't find it fun, but that's only because I've been watching the manga or sorry, the anime on Netflix and, you know, to their credit, they follow the manga extremely closely. So it kind of makes for a boring read when you see the anime and try to go back and read the manga. But I've really been enjoying Kake Gurui Twin because this is the uh, prequel with uh, Mary as the main character. Uh, so it's new material. It's a lot more fun to read. Um, I've just started collecting it within the past couple of weeks, so I haven't collected it all. Uh, Ghost in the Shell. <sighs> the only reason why this stuff is in my collection, like, I don't like Ghost in the Shell, the manga. Like, it's, I think Ma, uh, Masamune is just way too up his own ass. Uh, but I keep it because this is like the Moby Dick of manga, right? You know, it's such a prolific title. Now, this is where we break the mold. A Silent Voice is actually uh, mine, or I bought it primarily for myself. When I watch the anime, talk about a story that just radically changes your life. Just makes you feel like a complete asshole for every time you were mean to somebody. It's a fantastic series, uh, or at least the movie was fantastic. And, um, I don't know, just I think it's going to be a, a classic that we talk about for years, kind of like Akira. Now... Now let's talk about the most criminally underrated series that's out right now, High Rise Invasion. This is so good. Everyone just needs to go and buy this, like, immediately. So good. Um, it's kind of like uh, Battle Royale meets... Um, I don't know what it's like, but it's like, it feels a lot like Battle Royale because this girl's in this world where there's nothing but high-rise buildings connected together by rope bridges... 
and these people in masks are like trying to kill everybody. It's pretty great. It's fantastic. Go pick it up. Uh, Crying Freeman. Um, this is one of the few in my collection I haven't read yet because, uh, well, one, I'm missing the fourth volume. I mean, that's not holding me back, but um, I don't know why I haven't read this all yet. It's a classic and I need to. It's Koei K. I love Koei K to death. Um, I just haven't gotten around to this one for whatever reason. I need to force myself to get that fourth volume. Uh, Castle of Dreams, Kiss Him, Not Me. Uh, my wife uh, just started recently collecting this one. Um, but we picked up like old volumes that our local bookstore had. And I didn't realize that this has been like out of print for a while. So I might have to go online to uh, flesh the rest of these out. Uh, Dragon Ball Super. Um... I need to uh, get all of Dragon Ball. Like, it's kind of a long story, but yes, Dragon Ball is the uh, property that got me into collecting uh, manga. Or, sorry, it got me into watching anime, which got me into collecting manga. But I've never gotten the mangas or anything. I need to do that. I've really been loving uh, Dragon Ball Super. Um, so, it's great stuff. Um, I think that's pretty much it, because all this is just more... Uh, graphic novels and whatnot. Um, oh, in case anyone was wondering what this is, um, I have a minor in uh, Japanese language and culture, and this was the uh, paper I wrote to uh, get the uh, last course uh, done for my uh, degree. And this is a story about the three different major revolutions in Japan, um, from the Battle of Sekigahara all the way up to uh, World War II. Uh, there we go. So, finish that up. Oh, this isn't manga, but these two series are really great right here. Black Sad, fantastic. Like, this book is worth it for the art alone. Um, and then Corto Maltese, like a great kind of Silver Age uh, kind of story. Uh, Non-superhero manga. Or, sorry, not manga, comics. This is uh, great stuff. Uh, I guess there's not too much else to say. I hope you enjoyed the uh, tour of my comic and kind of geek collection. Um, if you're one of my family and friends, uh, I hope that uh, you enjoyed this. If you're a random person that stumbles upon this on YouTube, I hope you like it. Uh, I guess if this blows up and gets like a bajillion indie hits, maybe I'll make more. But it probably won't happen because I'm not super famous like that. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed. Take care.